Welcome to the shop. I hope you're having a great day. All right, we got a whole bunch of knives and a whole bunch of handles to do. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. I was thinking uh, I'm not going to record this because I have a bunch of handle videos already. But then I realized, you know, I'm going to do some wood on here. And thanks to Jeremy at Simple Little Life, I'm going to do some G10 pins. I haven't done pins in a long time. But I'm going to show you the usual way I do it with pivots like this. You can do it with wood or anything. Now, I've never worked with desert iron wood. So if it cracks, you know, that's on me. But I've done wood before. Like this, I did this with pivots and then I got it all shaped out and then put in the pins. So I know it can be done. Let's get to it. On this wood, it's thicker. And if, you, if you've ever seen my videos before, I always drill one side, then open the clamp and put the other side and drill through both. So I need to use two one, two, three blocks. I got these down on Amazon and I always use something to stop. Just in case this gets out of my hand or something, it's gonna stop there and not a helicopter and come back and hit my hand. Hopefully. All right, then I got my deals with the uh, quarter inch screws. Since these are quarter inch holes, I mean, if you use eighth inch holes, do eighth inch screws just long enough so they're going to do that. Then you can move the clamp and you know it's not going to, you know, get in the way anywhere. Or at least you know these two holes are aligned once you do that. All right, so real quick, I'll show you what I do here. I get my longer quarter inch. Pull one. Slip the other through. Yeah, it's going to be longer, but. but that's okay, because it'll push through. I have a feeling this isn't quarter inch. <laughs> put this up against how we want it. You can put a clamp real quick on it to hold it. But put it on there loosely. Charging my battery for my Sony. <laughs> it's me. I hope I wasn't out. I didn't have my uh, screen. I didn't have the screen up, so I hope I was in focus. Now you're going to check it. Here I'm cutting up anyway, so I'm not worried about this sticking over. But I am worried about the back being over. And the back, you know, the butt of it being over. The back being over. And right here being over. So we are good. Everything's covering. Clamp one down. And that way, you know, I'll drill a hole, pull it, put the pin in. Do that. It's always good to use two clamps just in case one gets loose, you know, or something. All right, back to the drill. We're just going to go straight through that one, pull it, put this one in there, and make sure you line your hole up. You know, sometimes you can only get the edge on because the clamp's so close. But make sure that hole is lined up or you'll mess up your one, two, three block and it won't go all the way through. You want to make sure you get bolts that are all the way through. See? Comes through all the way. That way, when you move your clamp, you don't have to worry about that moving and shifting. All right, now we can just move this clamp up here. I'm not used to having a, a zoom lens on, so I'm going to stand right to the camera, but... <laughs> And there we go. Now we can pull this one. Last one. And see that way I know it's all straight. Boom. See? If, it's, if, if a bolt will fit through, then uh, pins or whatever you want to use. But we're going to put this on pivots. What I like to do, because the pivots don't really fit in the hole that well, so I'll turn it on and I'll just go up just a little bit. You don't want to really go, you know, just kind of wobble it around, but be careful it doesn't catch and pull through. All 
because your pivots are the exact same size so to flare it out just a little bit makes it better let me put this on the knife so i got these two to do mainly because i'm going to put g10 pins in this and well it'll be too late by the time you see this but i, I think i'm going to do silver i got brass just in case but we'll see <laughs> i think silver would look better i'm going to do these both well you know i'm going to clean them up and get them down to the spine and all that as far as I can and then I'm going to do the G10 on this because I know a lot of people don't have a horizontal grinder now I'm going to do this one on the horizontal grinder and then we'll get them epoxied up because I got some handles to epoxy together we'll see where we are from there <laughs> Man, that G10, I like to do a horse on the vertical because you can just cut into it. But you don't want these lines. And don't worry about hitting the spine and all that, see? You're going to want that all even and cleaned up anyway. I always heard that iron wood was hard, but man, it just burned that belt right out. Not to, not to mention it smells like dog shit. I thought I stepped in something I haven't even left the room. <laughs> I'm just using a bunch of old belts till I get it down to where I want it. Now you can see I'm just using the edge of the belt to cut. When you do the whole thing in, it doesn't cut as fast. Now you wear out the belt quicker, but you're using old belts anyway. Well, <laughs> it's ironwood as well. I'm just doing this to show you what you can do. Now, if you don't have a small wheel attachment, you can use those drums that go in a drill press or in a, a power drill. If I can find them on Amazon, I'll link them in the description under my Amazon links. They might already be there, but it's been a while. And I keep doing this because all this gets gummed up. You can see I'm burning the wood, but all that's got to come off anyway. So I'm not, I don't really care. You know, now we just gotta clean it up. So let me show you how we'll clean it up. I'm gonna do the G10. <laughs> All right, here's a Warren 80. Let's see, you can tell I already used it for something, but well, it looks like G10. Huh, 
<laughs> I guess that's what it was for. <laughs> so we're just going to do the outside, take it off, and uh, yeah, I'll show you then. Now I built the top platen on here, right here, you can see it. I built that a long time ago, mainly for sharpening, but it works awesome for, it works great for smoothing out. Uh, it works great for this, put it that way. <laughs> By the way, if you're doing this, stand to the side. I know it seems uh, pretty self-explanatory, but if something catches and goes, you want to shoot across the room, not into your chest. And if you don't have the top plot, you can just use the wheel to smooth it. All right, small wheel attachment. All right, I'm going to take these off. I noticed right here there's a spot, there's a gap. So I'm gonna hit this on my disc grinder until I get that down. Oh, I'll put that on, I'm gonna pop these off and uh, I'll show you. So on this, I wanna come from about here and yeah, just something like that. So I'll take these off, put them together and then cut it. I haven't showed this in a while. Anytime you're taking these pivots out, you know, go to the hardware store, Home Depot, whatever. Make sure you buy, like these are 8.30 seconds. They're, they're quarter inch, 8.30 seconds. I was probably just screaming in your ear. Don't hit the pivots. Put the screw in and make, get longer screws so they knock out. Use the one, two, three blocks. Then you can hammer on the pin. Make sure you know your holes over one of these holes. See, pins come right out. Unscrew the screws. Boom, your pivots are off and they're good. Then you just put them together. Whoops. <laughs> put the pivot back in, put them together. Boom. Sitting here leaning on the hammer looking for it. <laughs> now you don't really want to sink the pivots all the way in when they're together. You just want to make it so they hold it. Now you go to your bandsaw and cut, boom. And you got your front. You know, a lot of people like to bring it straight down. You know, whatever you, way you do it, you want to have these shaped. All right, I'll meet you back at the disc grinder because I'm about to flatten this. You can see there's a gap on this one. So I'm about to bring it down. So if you look, if you look, there's a gap right here, which means some of this back needs to come off and maybe some of this front. So I'm just going to take it off Get this pin out <laughs> and flatten it. And just like that, we're even. That's why it's good to use pivots. You know, if you pin everything on there and you think, oh, that's L, you know, the clamp will pull it in and it doesn't, then you're screwed. So with pivots, you can always take it off, fix it, do all that. All right, back to the grinder. So what I do here, well, 
I kind of go by look, or I kind of go by look, but I'll, I'll draw it for you. You see, here's the gap, you know, where the two meet. You're going to want to stay, I'd say, a good 16th to 8th inch away. So, when you're grinding down, <laughs> let's do it normal. When you, you know, don't pass this line. An old carpenter trick. <laughs> I had to put my jacket on. I got the window open to blow everything out and the fans on my back. It's freezing. All right. Yeah. So don't pass this line. Here we go. Time for a new belt. <laughs> Look at that iron one. Well, a new used belt, I should say. <laughs> That's why I save all my used belts. I try not to take my respirator. That's why I save my used belts. Because uh, they're good for grinding out handles. And as you can see in here, remember how it burned all that look? You just got to ease up. You know, you can lay into it when you know you're hogging out. But then, uh, you know, let up. <laughs> All off the vertical. Now we just got to put the uh, small wheel attachment and get in here. Let's see if we can push this belt just a little bit more. <laughs> Alright, well, I forgot to delete a couple clips from the videos back, so I ran out of space. But I should have it on this camera. Anyway, right off the belt, I'm going to say I'm calling it a night anyway. You know, see, that's the one thing. Glue up, I'll do glue up tomorrow, but you want to make sure everything is clean before you do glue up. You know, this can be all sanded out, but this front, I need to fix up this front just a little bit. That's the part. From here forward, you want to make sure it's finished how you want it. See how this one is curved over, but this one isn't? I'll have to take it off and do that again. All right. I'll see you over the bench for glue up, which probably be tomorrow for me.
Off camera, I went ahead and finished everything else up. You can see I stone washed these, you know, two toed in the flats. If I can get the dirt off of it. <laughs> I even went on the mill and stippled some, uh, just took like a quarter inch end mill since this is hard and I always forget to do it before and I didn't really know I was using pins. So, but I stippled here and then on the drill press, I stippled here. Now, let me show you what I did with the wooden one because I already got that one put together. I'm just gonna mix up some epoxy and then uh, throw these together. But I did the exact same thing here. Hit this with a quarter inch drill bit on the drill press and then hit this with a quarter inch on the end mill because it was hardened. Just a little bit more sticktivity. Oh yeah, and the pins. You know, if you look at the pins this way, they don't fit. They're too... Well, now that I say that, they fit, but... <laughs> they don't fit in a lot of them, you know. Some of the holes are a little bit bigger. So what I did... Oh, that's what it was. See, I did it on the opposite sides. So I made this back hole a little bit longer, but I domed these pins. These pins are domed. And I also, I, you know, I put it in my drill press and then took it on the grinder and just domed them. And I also brought it down a little bit. That's why they're so big, so I can tap it in and tap it out till they're even and then cut them off. See, this side is bigger. So the front of this side hole was bigger. Front, the back of this side is bigger. It's just something I did on both of them. I was a little worried about this one, so I already put it together. So let's epoxy this one up, and you can see the holes are domed here and not back here. But see how big they are? Plenty of room to move it back and forth. Let's get this epoxied up. I also got some uh, handles I gotta put together for the other one of these. <laughs> but you can see here, I already did the logo. I'm keeping this just like this. This is 95% finished. All I gotta do is epoxy it, knock it together, and uh, cut the pins and, and just finish it up. There's a little spot right here where it busted through. So I'm gonna have to make these thinner. That's why I'm pushing it through this way. Cause I didn't want to push it through and pop it out more. Let's get over here and do it. Don't forget to have rubbing alcohol, especially if your knife is 95% finished. You want the alcohol to take off most of the epoxy. Cause you're not gonna be able to get run out off. I forgot to get wax paper or uh, parchment paper, either one, so I don't know. I guess I'll just have to be careful with it. This is down in my Amazon links too. I keep saying that. <laughs> I think I said that four times in this video. <laughs> I'm not even gonna put it up front here. I'm just gonna put it behind the pins and all that. Cause everything else I can get away from. One, two, three, block. Rubbing alcohol. Look, none's at the front yet. We we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Look, we're through. I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to bust up that wood, but we are through. You know, they're piling through. So, uh, oh, let's clamp it up. That got the epoxy squeezed out the front. <laughs> so we just gotta keep cleaning it up. We can't watch on it. Check it for a while. I think after like an hour, it should be fine. But just keep checking it. Let's get this one together. Hey look, bottom, boom. And this was the easy one. <laughs> there we go. Like that. There. <laughs> Woo! That was a fight. <laughs> Now 
Now you see why I don't do pin handles that much? <laughs> I've never used these G10 pins now, remember. <laughs> See, I'm not worried about this G10 breaking as much as I was worried about that wood breaking. Now as I say that, it's going to pop right through. <laughs> Alright, well that's about it. I'll be back when the pins are cut and see what we got. Boom! So there we are. I still got hand sanding to do and stuff like that, but you can barely tell the pins are there. I like it. Yeah. So you can see the pin right there in the light. And in the back. But yeah. Woo! Nice. And this one fits real nice in the hand. I fixed up the jimping a little bit. I polished the back so it's a you know a high polish. And it's got the stone wash in the middle. Yeah man. And this one came out real nice too. I still got hand sanding on all these. The pins, I was surprised the pins, you know, I thought I had to fight the pins more. I'll tell you what, I forgot about it, but I was sitting there grinding. I was like, man, why does it smell like dog shit in here? Man, this ironwood, I don't know if it's this piece or what, but whoo, you start putting some sandpaper to it, and all of a sudden you think you stepped in something. <laughs> boom. And now I just got all these to finish. Well, these are all finished too, boom. This is like the first two tone that I didn't do an Anzo on. That CPM 3V. All I gotta do is put screws in these. And I think you've all, if you've seen my past videos on Hamones, you've definitely seen this one. Yeah, see, here's the Anzo. Here's what it usually looks like on my knives, but I just did the one tone. Boom. Two tone on this one too. Same thing. All right, that's about it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell, all that good stuff. Leave comments below how you do your handles, if you do them different. If you like to pin them all up and then finish them up. You know, some people just do the front part, get that sanded, and then, you know, epoxy them all up and all that. But, you know, let me know what you do. Do you like removable scales or, you know, pin scales, whatever. You know, I always choose removable, but I figured I'd do this video and show it all how it's done and how you can put... Wood on pivots, carbon fiber, G10, it doesn't matter what the handle material is, you can put them on pivots if you want to get the handle done mostly. Alright, so that's about it. Thanks for watching. I got shirts up on my website, which I'll put up in the cards, and the first link down below. Amazon links are down there, all the tools I use. If you, you know, go to Amazon, it gives me a kickback, it doesn't cost you any more. Uh, knives are up there. Hopefully, I got seven more knives that should be up there soon. All right, I got to get back on that dagger. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. And as always, take it easy.